the Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, returned to the campus on Sunday. They picked up backpacks and other belongings left behind after the school shooting almost two weeks ago. The school will reopen on Wednesday. The debate on gun control is expected to continue in Washington, D.C. this week. An NRA spokesperson pushed back against some suggestions President Trump made last week, like raising the age limit to buy certain weapons. And the average price of regular gas is down six cents in the United States. It's now 2.59 a gallon. A survey says this is the first decline since December, but prices are expected to go back up. That's because of crude oil costs. The average price in Jackson is just 2.23 a gallon. 605, two towns in Mississippi Delta. They're asking lawmakers to approve a 2% restaurant tax increase. Senate Bill 3013 would help fund recreation, tourism, parks, and economic development for Carrollton and North Carrollton. If the bill passes, the towns would need to approve the taxes by a 60% vote. And a Jackson firefighter becomes an internet sensation. It's my favorite story of the morning. A video shows him singing at a Walmart in Jackson. Just listen. A long time coming, but I know change. A change gon' come. I hear you, Captain Ernest Whitlock. He sang for a Black History program at the Walmart after the original singer, we're told, was late. This video has more than 50,000 views on Facebook. I do follow him on Facebook. I know he loves Facebook, so good for him for stepping in. I'm not surprised. I want to hear more. I do, too. And <laughs> I want to eat some of his barbecue. Remember he has the plum it's barbecue? It's absolutely delicious. Number one barbecue in all the firefighters absolutely. in Jackson. Absolutely. He's so good and talented. -talent. Yeah, he's a five-tool player. <laughs> we'll have to post this on Facebook for him as well. 607 is the time. Meteorologist Kelly Scott. He can cook. He can sing. What else can he do? <laughs> Movie as well. Night, Night school. school. Yeah. yeah. We've talked about that on the show before. I do like Tiffany Haddish. She's such an inspiration. Okay. Yes. Indeed. Well, good. Well, we'll have to be on the lookout for that. Absolutely. I just read her book, The Last Black Unicorn. It's a okay. good read. Okay. Very funny. Sounds like it would be fun. <laughs> you can find us on Facebook. Please like us on Twitter and visit our website. It's WJTV.com. Please engage with us on social media. We are all over the web. In fact, I am live streaming on Twitter right now. Follow me at Noble Jones on TV. And you can see Andrew Harrison. WJTV this morning at 630 starts right now. Uh, I ran on my career yeah. and, and my, my work ethic spoke for themselves. 32 years that you've been in law enforcement. I spoke with many of the supporters here, and they told me they were looking for a, a change. Yes. And uh, is that what you're expecting to bring? What can people expect? Well, not only a change. Now, JSU honored the First Lady with an honorary degree. Right after her speech, she left the stadium, and uh, we're told that her Secret Service driver is actually a JSU graduate. I'll have much more about the ceremony tonight at 10. For now, reporting live at Veterans Memorial Stadium, I'm Brittany Noble Jones, WJTV 12. We're expecting rain later today at the Soul Bowl here in Jackson. But it's not raining right now, so we are having a good time here at the tailgate. I was around too many Alcorn fans. That's what my producer said earlier today, so I had to come find some more Tigers. This is what they call J Nation. They are preparing for a whole lot of Tiger fans later today. Hey, you guys, what are y'all making over here? Chicken on the stick. Chicken on the stick. Can you show me what's going on? How does this work? You prepared the chicken earlier, or yeah, what's going on? Prep. And then wow. we're going to dip it in there. Got your flour ready? Yeah. We're going to dip it in there. Tony Yarber said his wife woke him up on Sunday in a panic. She was getting ready for church and noticed a random car outside their home. Now, what happened next is like something right out of a movie. Pastor Tony Yarber taught a lesson before church on Sunday when he realized someone broke into his truck. As I was walking towards the car, my truck door flew open, almost hitting me. Yarber has a black belt in martial arts, so he used his training to get the 22-year-old in his garage while they waited for police. My mindset changed, and I knew that I couldn't kill this young man. He looked too much like the young man that goes to our church, and um, so I just got to paddle. Come on out here and video you. And the former mayor of Jackson used his paddle to spank the man. When you break in people's stuff, it's because somebody ain't whooped your tail. But I definitely want to make sure that if he was going to leave jail the same day that he went, that he didn't leave the same way that he came. Now Juwan Bibbs is facing charges for auto burglary and possession of marijuana. Reporting in Jackson, Brittany Noble Jones, WJTV 12. We are actively looking into it. Okay. He said that um, there was no investigation. Well, 
if information, what my main thing is, is if information is, is called into us, we would ask that anybody that has any information call us and let us know. But Under Sheriff Ken Spencer says he knew about the damage to the Emmett Till marker in LaFleur County last week. It became national news when high school students from St. Louis tried to fix it by drawing pictures and writing down facts. I put that his legacy would live on and that we would continue to fight for justice and freedom and equality in his name. It's so easy for us to, when greeted by ignorance and hatred, just to throw ignorance and hatred right back. It's important to keep in mind it is our job to forgive those who are ignorant to us. The town of Money is very small. There's only about 100 people who live here. So without this marker, you'd have no idea that this is the old Bryant's grocery store. This is where Till is accused of flirting with a white woman before he was kidnapped and murdered. Alan Hammonds, the president of Hammonds and Associates, works with the state. He and his crew took this 100-pound cast aluminum sign to repair it. The first damage occurred in mid-May. Someone took what appeared to be a flat blade screwdriver and actually gouged into the vinyl. This time, he says the vandals literally pulled the vinyl off, erasing the history on the back of the sign. Hammond says it will take about 10 more days to fix this, but it's hard to work when so many people are interested in what happened. It's always uh, going to be on, on the minds of people, not only here, but around the world. And I think that was evident on Monday or Tuesday. We received, you know, telephone inquiries and did interviews with people from Europe as well as the, as the you know, continental United States. Well, Andrew, this here is another Emmett Till marker honoring the place that they found his body. Um, it was hit with 40 bullets last year. So again, if you do file a complaint, LaFleur County deputies say they will investigate and prosecute the people responsible. Brittany Jones. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The marijuana project takes up an entire building at the University of Mississippi in Oxford. The secured lab is hidden on campus. And does the government stop you from producing an overwhelming amount too much? Well, you, do, you can't really produce at your leisure. You produce what the government asks us to produce. Once the plant is finished growing, the team breaks it down for research. We are working under the National Institute on Drug Abuse, and therefore there is a lot more interest in doing drug abuse research. But with set dosages prescribed by doctors, Dr. Mamoun El Soli says the plant can be a powerful cure. NIDA works with the National Institute of Health. This is nothing but, but leaves and buds. NIH says marijuana has the potential to safely treat pain, nausea, epilepsy, obesity, addiction, and autoimmune disorders. The FDA already approved medication with THC to help with cancer and AIDS patients. Industry was shy from looking into that aspect because it's marijuana. And marijuana was a bad name. And so it's they got a stigma to it, so they don't want to develop it. And, and, and this day, to be honest with you, it's even getting worse because there's no regulation. And then why would I, as a, as a CEO of a, of a big pharmaceutical company, mm -hmm. try to develop marijuana as a drug when everybody else is growing it? Researchers here experiment with different levels of CBD and THC. I'm told CBD can be used for medication. THC will provide the high. They also studied street drugs, but the feds recently shut that program down. The stuff that they're starting to grow now, very, very dangerous? Yes, it has such a high content of THC. The, 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 the good thing about this plant is you, you, don't really, you can't really ingest too much to kill you. Because before you get to the point where it will kill you, you pass out. Dr. El Soli says he's never seen a death from marijuana in his triple decade career. So far, eight states legalized marijuana. Mississippi decriminalized small amounts in 1978. What do you think the, the problems that we'll begin to see after uh, legalization? The problems are going to be a long term problems. You're going to see the young generation being stoned and being later on so lack of motivation to do things. He wants customers who shop at dispensaries to know the marijuana products can be unsafe. I was talking about making a drug like marijuana and putting it on the market, putting it in the dispensaries mm -hmm. and claiming, you know, specific uses. But there is no scientific data 
to support the use of that particular material that's in the dispensary. Why not? Because they didn't generate the data. They don't have data. All they're interested in is to grow, harvest, put it there, sell it, get a lot of money. It's hard to apply for the federally approved grant to grow this plant. It costs millions of dollars to construct a farm like this one at Old Miss. But the DEA says they will work with more growers to expand the supply.